This is Criteria. Welcome back to Criteria. I'm Thomas Miras. I'm here with my co-host, James Majewski. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. We're here as we continue to trundle our way through the Vatican film list uh, with uh, a film included on the list under the heading of art. It is. It's under art. Yes, it is. It's an Uh, odd place to put it, I think. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I thought that this would definitely be couched under values. Okay. Well, yeah, it could be both. Anyway, uh, the the film in question is Little Women, Um, and since there have been a number of adaptations, I'll say specifically George Cukor's uh, Little Women of 1933, starring Katherine Hepburn as Joe March. Let's each buy what we want and have a little fun. I'm sure we work hard enough. Well, I know I do. It's not the work I mind so much. It's having to tell Flo King how pretty she looks, and things I know would look as well on me. Well, what would you do if you were shut up all day with a fussy old cross patch who flies off the handle every move you make? Joe, don't use slang. Besides, don't forget she gave us the dollar. I'm sure neither of you suffer as I do. You don't have to go to that nasty old Davis school with impertinent girls who laugh at your dresses and label your father because he isn't rich. Libel, libel. Don't say label as if Papa were a pickle bottle. I know what I mean, and you needn't be satirical about it. It's proper to use good words and improve your vocabulary. (whistles) Aren't we elegant? You'll never be thought so with your slang and manners. I hope not. I don't want to be elegant. Well, you needn't whistle like a boy. That's why I do it. (whistles) Oh, I detest rude, unladylike girls. And I hate affected nimini-pimini chips. Birds in their little nests. Agree. This was the third film adaptation of Little Woman, but it was the first uh, sound. Mm. So there were two silent films, mm-hmm. and then this, and then a bunch of other... Um, bunch of other film adaptations. I think there was a famous one in the 90s that is uh, well liked. And then, of course, in 2019, there is... Uh, yes, the 90s one had... Um, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Yeah. That's right. This is the only one I've seen. This is the only one I've uh, seen, yeah. too. Have you read the book? No, yeah, I haven't. I was considering reading the book in prep for this. My original idea was, yeah, yeah, I'll read the book, and then I'll uh, I'll get like a way head start on it. I'll months in advance, I'll read the book, and then I'll, you know, I'll watch a couple other adaptations. I'll watch the 2019... You know, uh, Greta Gerwig version. Yeah. I always heard good things about it, so I'd it's love to a read long it. Book. It's very long. It's like, depending on the edition, it's like five hundred to seven hundred pages, surprisingly. And apparently, uh, Little Women, as we know it today, is actually two novels. It's Little Women. I don't remember what the sequel was called, but then it's been sort of put together into Big one women. story. Yeah. Well, she did write Little Men. That's another book that she wrote. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, now I don't know if it's in the. How can the we never little, hear I don't about know, little men? <laughs> I don't know if it's part of the Little Women uh, cinematic universe <laughs> or if it's a completely different, you know, group of people. Yeah. But um, you know, yeah. So, so the, apparently the original book ends like maybe after I'm not sure exactly, but I think it ends after um, Margaret gets married, and I think then the book ends with Joe happily unmarried. Yeah. And uh, I think that the people were clamoring for a match for Joe, and then she came back and wrote a sequel. Oh, really? She finds an odd match for herself. Huh. Um, I don't know that that was the only reason she wrote the book, but I I feel like I read that she made some comment to that effect, Mm -hmm. uh, Louisa May Alcott. So... I also realize it's a little much of an effort to make to discuss a film that we're only watching because it's on the Vatican film list. Not that there's anything wrong with the film, but uh, it's hard to... This is one of those instances where I really wish I could talk to somebody who was involved with the compiling of this list and be like, why did you put Little Women on there? Why did you put Lavender Hill Mob? Why did you choose some of these? It's a list of important films, you know? Uh Um, So I'm I'm interested. But like beyond this list, is this film considered to be like an important... Not as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, Now, now, so does... It it doesn't even seem so. Like one notable thing is that it stars Catherine Hepburn, yeah, of course, and so she's she's right. an important film actress. 
But I think when you're talking about Catherine Hepburn, this isn't even really like one of the first films that you talk about. I think it may have been one of her earlier roles in like her breakout Hollywood yeah. success. But yeah, so uh, I mean, is it exemplary of a certain genre? You know, I, it's it's an interesting question because there's a number of reasons I could think why they would put it in, on the list. But those reasons would all put it on the values section. Like, right. oh, it's a nice film about a family. It's wholesome, you know. So I really don't know what what this film was considered to be exemplary of. Yeah. Other than sort of like a certain period of Hollywood literary adaptation. I mean, thematically, it does have to do with a writer. So it does have to do with art in some sense. Yeah, but I know? think the art section is more for films for their artistic qualities, not because they're about mm -hmm, mm -hmm, art, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and this book is, it's not that much about art, you know, no, yeah, it's just, I mean, that is a vehicle for the character's aspirations and development, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not about being an artist really. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, Little Women, 1933. The other question was, you know, there's sort of an expectation and I heard a number of people, a couple of people say this to me, oh, you should, you definitely want to get a woman on there, you know, woman guest <laughs> to discuss the film with you. <laughs> And certainly there's, you know, benefits to that potentially, but I don't know. I, for a number of reasons, I thought we, we should go it alone. First of all, it's kind of hard for us to find guests for this podcast in the first place. There's only so many people who are interested in the sorts of films we're discussing, have something interesting to say about them, and are looking at them in the way right. that we're hoping for. It's hard enough to find an audience for this podcast, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, the way we do it is we're like, oh, that person would be interested, interesting to talk to. Let's, you know, ask them what films perhaps on the Vatican film list do you want to discuss? And they pick them. And nobody ever mentioned Little Women. I don't know how many people these days have seen this movie except for like Little Women fanatics, you know, <laughs> or just like classic Hollywood, yeah. you know, people. Uh, so I um, it, that would have been tough. And it, it would have felt like, oh, we're getting this person on just because it's a woman. Mm hmm. But not because they have any, like, special interest in this film or even in the book necessarily. So that seemed kind of contrived. And also, you know, the the purpose of this podcast um, is, you know, uh, we're not experts. We're not cinema experts. Sometimes we bring people on who know a lot more than we do. But um, it's more to serve as a... Um, just a, going through the process, an example of going through the process of engaging with these kinds of films. And mm -hmm. so um, there seems to be some uh, some potential gain in approaching it as two guys, you know, not not dragged to the film by their wife or their girlfriend or their sister, you know, who are watching it on their own as two guys. And how do we how do we engage with sure. little women? Sure. Uh, and, and also seems if, you know, if I can get some you know, some woke points, you know, <laughs> by saying, you know, this yeah, is a progressive guys, argument, right? Guys should be, but I, but I would say this sincerely guys, you know, we should read uh, Jane Austen, you know, we shouldn't be disinterested in stories about women. And, and in fact, I read that early in the 19th or in the late 19th century, this book was put on a list of like great books for boys yeah. or something. Well, do you think that that's partly why it gets included on this list? Because it's, it's based on this story written by a woman it deals with an ensemble cast of women. Yeah. You know, it, it's really hard to say again, it was put on the art section and not the value section. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not a good work of art, but it's not a super important purely in it's like artistic qualities. Right. As You've mentioned a Jane historical... Austen a handful of times. Yeah. Do you think that this, I mean, I mean, okay, look, I haven't read the book either, but like, I, do you think that this really like, uh, kind of occupies like a same space and like literary prestige well i don't know about that i mean i you know it's more in terms of subject matter that i'm referring yeah, to i see and and uh you know because if there was i've a, never read if the there book was a jane austen adaptation on here that'd be cool yeah but i've never i've never read the book and if you had never read jane austen but just watched a film adaptation of jane austen would you think that it had the same quality you know, that's quality, a good point you know that's a good point i i i have only seen the uh the old bbc pride and prejudice series i saw that in high school i really liked it that's the only book by jane austen i've read it's been a long time yeah um and then recently i saw a little bit of uh I want to say a recent version of Sense and Sensibility mm -hmm. that one of my roommates was watching. Um, 
and it seemed enjoyable, but um, I don't know that it struck me as like, it kind of struck me in the same way this movie struck me as like charming and like, you know, a finely tuned like sense of sentiment and, and uh, you know, matters of like kindness and humility and pride and not like, oh, we have to like, you know, get the, the three rings together so the universe <laughs> doesn't implode you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, or like, or like, oh, here's the anti-hero and like, you know, he's uh, having a midlife crisis and right. you know, sleeping with young women right, away from right. his wife. You know, it's just these like finely tuned, it's like in this society where there are already these standards. And mm -hmm. then within that, you're working with these kind of like finely tuned uh, virtues and, sure. you know, playing with social conventions and, and stuff. So, so in that sense, you know, there's some similarities, I think. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not claiming that – I don't know that anybody would claim that the novel Little Women is on the same level as Jane Austen on a literary level. But, I, you know, it's regarded as a classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I felt a little – I definitely feel a little, like, trepidation in discussing this film because I'm aware that Little Women occupies this sort of um, – Beloved. Yeah space in like the literary world and i'm not engaging with this story on that level at all really i'm just responding to this film right and um and as a film you know just taken on its own i'm i i'm struggling to have to feel like i have a whole lot to say about it i don't know that i have a whole lot to say about it either yeah i think i enjoyed it more than you did I, I didn't I so I will say that I did enjoy it. Yeah. But it took me a little while to like for it to hook me. Yeah. Um so like the the first half of the film is pretty oh, I don't know what, what word to use to describe it, but you know, it's like they're helping the poor and they're There's not a lot their of crisis. Mom and like yeah, you know, and 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 if there is any it's like very subtle how right. like the sort of problems begin to present themselves specifically right. with Joe. Right. You know, from the get go, it's not apparent that Joe is going to be our focal point. Right. Um, yeah. And now, I mean, you get a big tip of the hat with it being Catherine Hepburn, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, but, um, but, but it's kind of like a slow burn where you begin to realize, wait a second, like, like something is amiss, you know, in paradise. It's right. kind of, and I didn't really get hooked until Joe goes to New York City. Mm -hmm. And that's like quite a ways into the film. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. But yeah, there's not a lot of like, not a lot of drama for a ways into the film. Mm -hmm. um, I did mention that this film is kind of like from a, a certain period of Hollywood literary adaptation. Mm -hmm. And um I think it might be worth men mentioning, saying a little bit about the director for that reason. George Cukor was mainly known for directing comedies and literary adaptations. And he did a bunch of stuff at RKO. Uh, he was assigned to direct a lot of their major films, uh, including Little Women, What Price Hollywood. Um, he mo moved to MGM, I think, after this film. And then he directed Dinner at Eight, David Copperfield, Romeo and Juliet, uh, a number of the dinner at eight is pretty well known uh, comedy, I believe. And uh, then he he actually um, started out directing Gone with the Wind, and then was replaced. There were a number of different people who worked on that film hmm. as director, and he actually started working on it um, before the film was even published. He was hired in 1936 to work on Gone with the Wind. I guess the book hadn't even come out yet, but they were already planning mm. to adapt it. And uh, so he worked on it for two years on pre-production uh, and significantly supervising screen tests of actresses in which Scarlett uh, – sorry, the, the, the character of Scarlett O'Hara was finally cast. Um, but he was later removed from the film partially because he was just taking so long to get everything done. He was apparently like a real stickler for doing things exactly right. Um and then he ended up working on uh, – this is kind of interesting to me, and part part of the reason I'm mentioning is that we just watched Hail Caesar, which is about this Hollywood producer who kind of moves from set to set and is a problem solver. Because he was a producer as well as, of a, as well as a director, and he spent a week on the set of The Wizard of Oz, which is also in the Vatican film list yeah. we'll be discussing. Um, he didn't shoot anything, but he made a lot of uh, tweaks to the actors, how they were approaching their characters – 
casting. I think he got the, the Tin Man cast. He changed hairstyles and costumes and things like that. So he had an effect on the, the way the film turned out, even though he didn't he didn't shoot any footage. Um, so anyway, uh, he also directed The Philadelphia Story, Gaslight, uh a Star is Born, so some like pretty major mm-hmm. classic Golden Age movies, and he ended up winning an Academy Award for Best Director for My Fair Lady in 1964. He worked from like the 30s through the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, we can cut all that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just interesting to me that you know this is like an ex- a director who kind of like. In, in is one of the exemplary directors of the old Hollywood studio system where you're mm-hmm. assigned a picture or you might just be sent there for a week to to work on some things and give some input mm-hmm. um and and he just sort of like churned out these adaptations um with a good reputation for quality mm-hmm. um he actually uh he he became known as a women's director which is relevant to this film mm-hmm. like he re- he resented that label but he was known for directing women really well mm-hmm. um he also oversaw more performances honored with Academy Award for Best Actor than any, than any other director. So I think I'm just wondering, like, why they put this film on the list in the yeah. art section. And it's is it like they, they do have other uh, novel adaptations in that section on the Vatican list. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what it's considered to be important in what it's, respect it's considered. To be I think important. that if you consider it as like a period piece it's america what massachusetts um i don't know if it says but yeah uh, it's clearly the north during the civil war yeah civil war um and you know it, it feels very uh you know authentic right Gone with the Wind comes to mind yeah as which well. you worked on so i can't help think of gone with the wind in, right in you know, regard to this movie and the similar situation of people being from the perspective, not of the people at war, but of the people waiting at home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you know, another movie that this got me thinking about is, uh, the beguiled. I don't know if you ever saw I that. Never heard of it. Um, well, uh, I never saw the original. I think it's also a film that's been done a handful of times. There was a version with Clint Eastwood, but then most recently, um, Sofia Coppola, did a version with uh what's his name um the actor from in bruges the irish actor colin uh, farrell colin farrell yeah. yeah and nicole kidman um uh some other notable female actresses and similarly takes place in the uh, during the american civil war i think it's in the south um and concerns like a group of women who have kind of been left to their own devices Mm -hmm. very different thematic uh concerns um because things get a little definitely intense at least in the the coppola version that i saw um and it's been several years now so i can't i can't actually remember how um you know appropriate or inappropriate the film's content was but uh superbly acted and Anyway, you know, it just made me kind of kind of think about that film because you at 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 some point you want the the claws to come out. You want some like some like conflict to happen. Right, in this but, film you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it doesn't really um I I got I got off on a tangent. Uh the initial thought was that uh, you know, maybe it's on the art section because it does a good job of sort of recreating this moment in time. Yeah, um, the costumes are nice. But then, you why know, wouldn't the, you put the Gone, the Wind, Gone with the Wind on there? Maybe much more ambitious period production. Yes, but maybe, maybe I mean, it's that film hasn't been without controversy. You know, even then, yeah, you know, maybe I don't know. I feel like they they could have put Gone with the Wind on there. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not Birth of a Nation. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, another thing might 1995, be 1995, yeah, it's not, not 2022. Another thing might be the performances. You know, you've got uh, uh, an ensemble cast of of women who have to kind of trace. I don't know what the timeline of this this the, the novel is, yeah. But but there's a lot of growth that happens because right. you know at the beginning of the film, one of the one of the 
the girls is still like in this uh this this schoolhouse right. with a bunch of other little girls. But yeah. then by the end she's getting married. Right. Um right. and then of course Joe kind of yeah. uh she she goes through the most changes and that's really quite superbly handled by Catherine Hepburn. She does yeah. a really good job. The of, ages are kind of ambiguous. And They're Catherine ambiguous. Hepburn is so much like bigger than most of the other girls. I think yeah. she's supposed to be younger than some of them, but she's just like taller. And, right. You know, right, right, right. It's kind of ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think she was like, she was, she, she seemed to be like kind of the middle child, you okay. know, yeah. like Margaret was right. the eldest. I wonder how, how old the Catherine Hepburn was. That's time. a good question. Because the things I've seen her in were a yeah. little bit later. All of the women actresses are women. Right. Like, they're they're women. Yes. But yes. they're cast and they they play these younger girls yeah. who are kind of growing up, you know. And so that's that's an accomplishment, right? Because it's, it's believable. And it's just interesting because Scarlett... Scarlett Hepburn. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. Catherine Hepburn... Uh, looks she has the oldest face she has like the most mature face of all of the actresses as well mm -hmm. like the other um you know you could easily imagine like a claudette colbert you know being cast as one of these girls that all they mostly have these like girlish faces mm -hmm. like very young looking faces mm -hmm. in her case she looks older and and maybe that fits her sort of like her tomboy she's less girlish you yeah know, yeah uh, character um but yeah, it is an excellent performance. I've only seen a few uh, Scarlet. Oh my gosh, everything gone with the wind still. Yeah. Um, Catherine Hepburn uh, things. I, I first saw her in Bringing Up Baby, and I just I just found her so insufferable in that. <laughs> I mean, she's supposed to be this like wacky, hyper character, but I just still couldn't stand her. I first saw um, her in Lion in Winter, which is like, I mean, that's an amazing. We should definitely talk about that movie when we're sure. done with the list, but. She's also kind of like uh, an insufferable character in a way. She's yeah. Eleanor of Aquitaine, yeah. And uh, I mean, all the characters in that in that play are insufferable, um, right? But uh, but but yeah, it was kind of hard to to disconnect from that. Yeah, you know, watching this. And then I saw her in um, the African Queen, and I was able to accept her more in that film. And then in this movie, um, she plays this very like extra character, but I felt like it blend. She blent in with the role very well. Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I was reacting to anything but her character. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. like I was, I didn't feel like I was reacting to like the the Catherine Hepburn ness of it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, overflowing the character. If that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, so I, I really did enjoy her performance, and as you mentioned, she does a good job of like showing her sort of growth and maturity, mm -hmm. and like calming down a little bit um as she gets older um okay well i think we've we've stalled quite enough and now we have to talk about what this movie is a you know the, the meat of this movie and you know what's the meat of this movie i don't know that's, that's why <laughs> we've been stalling um i guess to stall a little more I think this movie or this uh, this novel was turned into a play too. Yeah. I, I think there are play adaptations yeah, that I've sure. seen. It would be easy to turn it into a play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> I just pour some more beer into my glass. Do you want some more? Yes, please. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, here we go. Here we go. The moment we've all been dreading. <laughs> Such a mistake not to have a female guest. I know. When I was watching um, this, my wife walked into the room and like just uh, with with like 20 seconds, she was smiling ear to ear and just like super into it. Right. Um, right. And, uh, you know, look, I'm not saying that this is like a movie for girls, yeah. but... Yeah. My wife seemed to like get into it way more easily than I did. She said, I think that you went into it thinking you weren't going to like it. And I don't know if that's true. Uh huh. Like I, I, I've watched enough films now that I think I can, I can go into something with an open mind. Yeah. I went into do it thinking I was going to like it and I probably liked it more than I thought I was going to. Well, I like that the father, um, is kind of this hidden figure. Right. But he looms over the whole story. Yes. 
Yes, very much so. Even when he shows up, we don't really spend a lot of time with him. He kind of just shows up, has one scene where they hug him, another where he marries off his daughter. Yeah, even after he's there, he's hardly yeah. doing anything. But it's like his his presence is somehow felt yeah. throughout the whole story from the very beginning. Yeah, a good example of that and like where we sort of like signal what are some of the, the thematic aspects of the film is when the mother brings a letter from the father. This is the first time that they're all together with their mother in the film. And she brings a letter and uh, it's right. It's Christmas Eve. And he's he, their father is a preacher. He's off serving with the Union Army as a preacher. But he's saying basically that when I return, I'll be like even like, you know, prouder of you than I am now. And like, I hope that you'll like face difficulty as well. And, you know, uh, but but he but he says something about conquering yourself. Right. Right. There. And so and, then they go through this litany of like their personal sins. Right. Like I, I am selfish and I'm going to do better. Do you think that this film shows shows them growing in these ways? That sort of like I mean, the mission statement at the beginning of the film? Yeah. I mean, what what does the little girl do? She like goes and like buys the big bottle of cologne for right. her mom. Right. And doesn't squirrel away any extra money for herself. Right. And pencils. <sighs> Sweet favorite pencils. <sighs> What's the problem? What do you? I mean, no problem. It's just like if this is like the the thematic stuff of which this film is made, it just leaves me a little untouched. You know, like okay. I get it. I get that it's sentimental. I get that it's like you don't like, think that there's a battle to be won, a moral battle going on here yeah but it it seems to be like like uh told to me yeah i did read that this this film was well timed because the public was starting to get upset with hollywood uh for its portrayal of a lot of violence and lurid you know provocative sexuality and stuff in their early 30s this is a pre-code film is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. And so and so this was a film that more conservative people wanted to be produced and were going to go it was apparently made of part of school curriculums and uh, I don't know how you would do that. I guess you would have to take them to know, like a field trip to the theater. Uh, you couldn't yeah, wheel yeah, in a TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, so so it was liked for that reason as well. Yeah, I also read um, that um because it was kind of just coming off of the depression that there was like a uh you know a nostalgic quality to a simpler time you know there was something kind of cathartic about watching this film you know in this time between the depression and 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 a, and right. a, and a world war you know right um that like the themes of men being away during the civil war and like the hardships that had to be faced were like definitely a lot more uh you know relevant heading into the what, you know the struggles of world war ii so sure you know like that's important that's like a thing that films can do you know uh oh man i want to kill myself <laughs> this is the worst episode we've ever done no yeah. question joe uh her thing is she's a tomboy and you know, uh, people are telling her she, she like falls down and she yells Christopher Columbus. And they're like, don't use such dreadful expressions, <laughs> which is really funny. Uh, I guess just because it's slang and they're supposed to be like classy young ladies. But um, so she's this tomboy and she's running around getting into trouble. And and uh, I guess the biggest conflict with her um, is that she uh, is friends with this young man, yeah. Laurie, yeah. played by Douglas Montgomery. And he... Uh, falls in love with her and she's not interested in him in that way. And she's not really interested in guys at all. She's not interested in getting married period for most of this film. Um, and uh, this is, this is where I wish I had read the book because I'm sure that there's more to the latter portion, you know, where she goes to New York and she ends up getting married to this German professor, yeah. you know, which is handled very briefly in mm -hmm. the film. You know, it's less than half of the film. Um, but uh, it's just interesting to me. I, I guess one question I have is like, why does she, what changes for her where she doesn't want to marry Lori and then she does marry this German professor? Is it because of a difference in her? Is it because of a difference in this professor? Is she actually in love with this professor? 
you know yeah, when, i mean he takes her around to like see the opera and go yeah. to the circus but she had and, good times with Lori too yeah but he's he's showing her the world you know he's yeah. like he's he's helping her to discover she wants to go to europe and uh and and see the leonardos and but he's right. like you know there's there's a lot right here and let right. me show it to you and right lori is like you know he he's a peer he 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 goes off to college and and does well in his in his books um but he doesn't have like the the lived life that professor bear is able to to offer her yeah. you know like he's is he a widower? Does he have children? I don't um, think that's mentioned. Anyway. Okay, but uh, slightly older. Not yeah, old. yeah. So you know, the the impression that I get is like she's she's an older soul. You know that she she needs to be with with a man, and that Lori Lori's a boy. Uh huh. You know, and and he he marries her 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 youngest sister. Right. Uh, so it's like right. She says this is this is how it was supposed to have been or something right. like that one thing she says um when she finds out that they're he's together with her sister she says something like uh you know maybe i would have said yes if he had come back not because i love him any differently but because it means more to me now or something like that yeah. being loved mm-hmm. than it did back then yeah uh, so what did you think of that that line Is it because she's lonely in New York or is it just because she's older and more mature and she understands that that has value, you know, outside of whether you feel a certain way towards somebody? Yes. Uh, yes. All those things. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, it sounded nice. You yeah. know, the line. <laughs> it sounded nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your input. Uh, <laughs> what did you think? I don't know. That's why I asked you. So. <laughs> but it sounded nice. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I liked the line. Yeah. Well, and it, it again, it was like she has matured. Yeah, you know? and she's a little more reflective. Yeah, um, yeah. But 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 like with the cologne bottle, you know, it's like okay, she has become more selfless. You know, it just feels like 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 things just kind of. You remember that story, the gift of the magi. Yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion of that story? Let me ask you first. I, I haven't I, I I I don't you know, I haven't read it since uh I forget who like wrote it. Freshman year of high school or something, you know. So right. I can't really remember, but I don't know why I always despise that story. Well, okay, the it feels, I, it feels it's a like... classic short story. I forget who wrote it. And it's about this, you know, this couple and they want to give gifts for each other, yeah. you know, for Christmas and and uh, you know, the guy she wants to get him like a watch chain or something you know so she uh you know she decides to cut her hair and sell it which is something that happened to this movie by the way uh and uh and then he was gonna get like this really nice comb and uh and and she you know and then he sells his watch or whatever it is who cares <laughs> to to buy her the comb and then it's like oh oh dear oh oh you know, but I sold my hair. I don't know what happens, but it's just this. She's supposed to be heartwarming and funny, but it just like it's. I just hate it. Just call it. Cold. But it just seems like it indicates more than it than it really shows. You know, like my favorite my favorite part of the film, actually, the part when I was most most touched was talking about the hair. Right after Joe cuts her hair, mm-hmm. and we cut to later that night, and her sister Margaret wakes up to Joe crying Uh and she begins to console her. Um, You know, she thinks that it might be any number of, of different things, uh, their father and, and you know, yeah. Yeah. But Joe says, it's none of that. My hair. Yeah. And, and I thought that that was like really affecting. Uh Um, And, and that's, that's showing me um, this process of moral struggle. That's showing me this 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 dynamic of self sacrifice for the family, but like at other points in the film, you don't really get that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's like, oh, we're so excited for our Christmas dinner. Yes, girls, but you know, there's another family that really has nothing, and so would you give your Christmas dinner to them? Mm-hmm. Yes, mother. You know, and then we go and see them like holding the baby and it's like, yeah. you know, so 
so like i'm not i'm not i'm not like knocking this in an absolute sense as if like like this kind of film doesn't have any merit <laughs> but uh-huh. certainly not what i'm saying but it's like not my cup of tea you know um you think I, it's too morally didactic or something that's how it felt you know and 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 for me like it starts to get like some it's not because you don't like women and you don't think that women's lives are worthwhile and interesting <laughs> right right and i'm sure that the novel i'm sure that the novel like you know f- you feel more of that i'm uh-huh. sure that it is more vivid you know but uh but but for me here you know it's it, it's like those those moments of of like felt struggle they're they're slow coming in mm-hmm. the film and right. when they start to arrive then i start to get like into it um but then almost as soon as they've arrived they're resolved you know uh, in sure. in like in like typical comedic fa- fa- fashion where like everything all the loose ends are tied up and everybody's together and like that's awesome i love that but i like i love it after like a period of like more like pitched struggle mm-hmm. uh i see yeah i see yeah because you know it's hard to see like you do see people maturing and growing and making a little bit of an effort but also it all just kind of falls into place it just kind of happens i mean we see that we see that joe uh you know um Lori professes his love to her and she says she can't marry him and he gets mad and runs away and then she's in new york and she finds out that he's come to new york but didn't visit her and she gets really upset Lori later says when they have this conversation after he marries her sister you know he says oh you were right you know i was impatient um but where actually is the look she's definitely matured but like how much of that is just because like a function of getting older automatically and yeah, how, I mean, mu- she, how much she goes back to her family to help with is it beth yeah who, who dies at the end yeah um so she's taking care of beth yeah but she was always nice and generous to people yeah the, the whole time she there was never any sense that she wasn't dedicated to her family she wanted to go to europe but she asked her mother's permission we never got the impression that she was mm-hmm. really that reckless mm-hmm. and selfish yeah or that she wasn't devoted to serving right I, I think she was equally as devoted to to serving the uh you know the the people around her as anybody else she just had a different personality and wasn't going to observe all of the social niceties and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know that like it's out of character or, or this huge growth that she goes back mm-hmm. to be with her sister. I think that we could take it for granted that that was what she would have done in mm-hmm. that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I'm just wondering if we're really seeing her uh, – grow with any kind of like real internal struggle for the most part i mean there there is an internal struggle in that she's she's sort of having to accept certain things but uh like she's she's accepting oh he didn't come to visit me and that's that's the situation if if there's a reason why she didn't want to be with Lori and she didn't want to get married it's it's we're given no not much more than that that's her personality yeah, and that's just who she is at that time in her life. And then she gets older, and yeah. she's a little more interested in getting yeah. married. Yeah, but we don't see any like sort of thing where it's like she has to choose one way of living over another way of living. Does that right. make sense? Totally, totally. Yeah, and it just makes you wonder like how much this this adaptation may just be like scratching at the surface of right. the the themes of this novel. Right, because you know like the story is told over the course of two separate volumes you know i'm yeah. sure that it like gets into the the, the I would weeds imagine a little bit so. you know but imagine so yeah. yeah because i mean look it's nice the characters are good i enjoyed it i was moved by plenty of parts of it but but now that i think of it it's hard to point to very many cases where there's like a real interior mm-hmm. struggle. Yeah. There's a little moment just like, oh, I'm being jealous. I, I should stop. Or like, you know, but, yeah. but, you know, 
Well, that's why I liked that 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 little scene in the in the bedroom at night with her crying about her hair. Right. You know, because up until that point, you don't really get any sense that she's really that bothered about it at all. You know, yeah. in fact, do you think that maybe maybe she she actually prefers it this way because she's such a tomboy? Right. Well, you know? that's what it, that's what was interesting to me about the scene is that you took it as like a moral thing, whereas I took it as like, oh, maybe she's not such a tomboy after all. Yeah. I took it more in terms of, oh, maybe she cares about being feminine. more. Well, but than I she think realizes. that that's operating, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, but um, I wasn't thinking of it too much of like a moral. But, but I, yeah, both are both are there. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like it's like that kind of you know, call it psychological complexity, but it's also just, you know, getting a little bit more of the grit, a little bit more of the, the cross, Yeah, you know? Um, so, I mean, again, yeah, Catherine Hepburn really does a good job acting these character moments and these different stages of maturity, but you also, in the writing and the plotting, you don't get so much of a sense of like, crisis and what crisis there is is like oh he's proposing to to her and she's she's just not able to go there yeah and she's saying no and you can just you can make your judgment about whether she should have said no or yes i guess right. but um but you know her decision is affirmed you know later by him and so she gets she marries this other guy but there's not a clear sense of like what's changed in you other than just sort of what the things that happen automatically, you go, you've had more experience, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and when she decides to go to New York, you could say that's another thing. She's pursuing her dreams as a writer. She's trying to get a breath of fresh air. Everybody supports her, you know, and she uh, she goes and there's we don't see her like being like fearful or like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should yeah, give yeah. up. It's like. Yeah, where's the where is the struggle mm -hmm, in this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I see your point. Yeah, no, but you know, I think that uh, like I was watching this with my my two year old son, and he was really into it. Like he he stuck around a, a lot longer than I expected him to. Okay. But but seriously, you know, like I think that uh, uh, sometimes I watch these you know black and white older films with him, and uh, he's not he's not quite as taken. But he stuck with it, so he was. Does he seeing... actually watch. Or yeah, was he just sort of in yeah. the room. No, no, he'll sit down and watch it with me. Oh, really? You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel better with these older films because um, there's like a lot less visual stimuli. Uh. You know, like I, 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 I'm careful about what I put in front of him because I don't want it to be like too. Yes, this is great. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Let's like talk about all the film through this lens because <laughs> now we have something to talk about. Let's do this. Well, don't make a a, a, a guy I promise you can't keep because we might just go on this for like okay. twenty seconds okay. and then it'll dry up. No, um, I was gonna say that uh, that I don't like to put him in front of a film that's too visually stimulating. So like you know, forget about it. Like a lot of cartoons are just like boom, boom, boom. I just my the impression I get is that his little brain can't keep up with like that level of like input. Uh -huh. But but that a film, a lot of older films, you know, they'll stay with one image for a lot longer. Uh -huh. There might not right. be like a ton of cutting, right? You know, um, uh, but um, and then certainly you know it being black and white means that there is like kind of like an ease to the 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 visual experience that you know maybe a, like a lot of cartoons may not have necessarily but um but yeah like you know he was he was sticking with it and he was he was interested in the the songs that got played right. you know when Catherine Hepburn pulls out her guitar during right. the the play you know um he was interested in the the visual tableaus of like the girls gathered around their mother, you know, or, yeah. uh, you know, he, he, he really liked it when they went to the, how the... could you tell? Did he say good tableau? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you can tell when he like settles in and, and is, is, is attending, uh -huh. um, you know, or like he'll, he'll mention something on screen, uh -huh. um, you know, like horse or baby or, you know, right. um, I'm really trying to figure out why they put this movie on the list. Like, <laughs> yeah, is it like, yeah. this is a good for, you know, you can watch this with your kids when they're 10. Yeah. You know, like what? Right. What are they trying to achieve? Because along with this list, and we'll talk about this more when we 
wrap up our discussion of the Vatican film list, there is this whole document that's like a curriculum for different like grade levels oh, of like how to discuss a film huh. and get people discerning about movies. Really? And like they're, yeah, they're more. Does it make stuff. reference to this list? Not, no. I don't think it makes reference to specific. It's okay. specific. It's more of like a format. It's like, here's the questions you can ask. I see. I and see. like, it's, it's by this guy. Yeah. Um, I think it's by Father Virgilio Fantuzzi. Yeah. My, think, who, my, who was one of the people who compiled the list. My so thought is that this film is included for much of the same reasons that a film like Lavender Hill Mob is included. And why do you think that was? Um, I can't remember if we mentioned it at the time, but I think I may have. That maybe there's just an attempt to be a little more holistic, a little more uh, egalitarian about the kinds of films that are included on this list. Okay. Because it's some important films. Right. It's not necessarily... They're not necessarily all going to be masterworks in the art of cinema. Right. Um, you know, they're not all going to be these these art house uh, films right. or, or, you know... Uh, some of them may just be sort of like a populist inclusion. Right, but I guess know? I just wonder why like it's not something that is more famous or more exemplary in its genre. Such as? Well, you know, um, I just, if you're going to put a, it could be a popular genre, but like, you know, if it's a Western, then you've got Stagecoach or, you know, yeah. uh, if it's a, if it's like a, there, there are, there are period dramas that are, and they are, there's some on this list already that are like very f well known for their mm -hmm. cast and their sumptuous, you mm -hmm. know, setting mm -hmm. and costuming and stuff. Yeah. And, and so I'm just wondering what specifically this is supposed to exemplify mm -hmm. as a popular film. It might just be kind of film. that it's a adaptation of Little Women. You know, <laughs> it might just be that like, yeah, like. We want to get little women onto this list. Well, it's just odd because again, this this the, all I think all of the names of people that I know who compiled this list, and again, we'll talk about this more when we finish up the list. I think they're all Italians, basically. Like they're mostly they're mostly clerics. Um, now I don't have the complete list of the committee, but uh, they're. Um, I don't know if there were any Americans, although the the. Um, the Pontifical Council, which produced this list, was headed by an American cardinal. So maybe he had some, he may have had some direct input on the list. I don't mm -hmm. know, Cardinal Foley. I think he maybe was just an archbishop at the time. But um, two thirds of the list are continental European films. And so, like, why is it that an Italian yeah. group would pick that? In particular, is yeah. it, 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 it? I'd be interested. Is Little Women popular in other languages? Is it considered to be like a quintessential picture of American life of a certain period? You know, mm. uh, so yeah, it's it's hard to say. Well, you know, apologies to anybody who listened to this Terrible. episode thinking that. Yeah, sorry, people. They can't all be bangers, you know. Yeah, um, and we do have up to this point have produced exclusively bangers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, well, you know, we had to discuss this film at some point. It's on the Vatican film list. Um, I don't know how much anybody would have had to say about this movie without having read the book. Yeah, that's and the thing. And yet it is certainly legitimate to watch the film and just view it on its own as a film because that's what it is. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we can just blame it on the film yeah <laughs> a little a little bit yeah not that it's a bad film i certainly enjoyed it but um yeah but i don't think i would have included it on this list to, if i'm being no, honest i don't know? think so i because i think there's so many other things that you could have um yeah you know i guess if you put all these classic films on there then you have a right to sort of throw in a few a few oddballs it's one know? of the things that makes the list charming is that it's yeah. not attempting to be um like the top 50 films of all time yeah and have we watched anything that we thought was bad so far no well um i think next time we're going to talk about some some example of film noir but we haven't decided what yet i need to do a little more research mm -hmm. but that should be our next thing we're going to go off the list and talk about something double indemnity or uh, yeah 
maybe um, out of and, the past. And, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube and you've got some thoughts about Little Women, maybe another adaptation other than the one that we considered, throw yeah. it down in the comments. You and know, if you let think we know. missed something about, you know, were there any real, like, dramatic choices being made by the characters here? Tell us that too, because I because I, I'm seeing maturation. I am seeing a process of growth. Yeah. That's definitely there, but I'm not seeing so much that's like an in, a true internal moment of crisis. And maybe that's a legitimate way of portraying moral growth that we don't have to see every moment of choice. But it also feels like it gives us less to talk about yeah. in discussion. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, again, profuse apologies to all whose time was wasted um, in this matter. We will be sending recompense uh, if you send us your P.O. box and your social security number and credit card number. We will send you uh, a check for $5. Uh, But you have to send us all that information (laughs) to get the money. So uh, make haste. Uh, All right, everybody. Oh, boy. We'll be better next time. Thank you.